Okay, today we're playing a game on Lijiang Tower. We are in the gold SR range and we will be playing one round as Zarya and one round as Farah. And our current team composition is not on the screen where I can see it. It's Hammond, Diva, Zarya, Genji, Mercy, and Lucio. So, the, the issue I have with it is Mercy, again, just like the other day, because who's she gonna damage boost is my issue here, right? Like... How is Mercy going to get value out of the damage boost? I guess Hammond and Zarya, right? Because Genji is going to be like way too deep for Mercy to follow most of the time. So just like, where's the value? Where's the value? Instead, we could pick just Anna and be massively better at healing tanks, have better utility, and have a very good target for nano boost. Or we could go, eh, Moira, who is just never really bad, way better at healing tanks, and able to contribute damage also. Also has a somewhat defensive and offensive ultimate. Way more value than Mercy gives to this team comp. If there's no really good damage boost target on your team, like basically a hitscan DPS or a Farah, I'm just kind of like, what's the point? really. What's the point in having the mercy? But that's just me. Anyway, let's just start the game. So we're on Night Market first, and we're on the Zarya segment right at the start. Some of our teammates are a little bit slow to pick their hero, which um, try not to be. The very opening part of the game tends to be the most important, because it can dictate the entire rest of the game. So try to, try to be uh, out the gate when the gate opens. So Hammond's uh, going way the fuck off over there. This is way too loud. Uh, we did just bubble Hammond kind of hoping he takes damage, which I'm not really a fan of doing because the whole point of Zarya is to build up energy. So you don't really want to just bubble people like hoping they take damage. And here's, here's just the thing I recommend doing with Zarya, at least with the projected barrier, the personal barrier you can be a little bit more straightforward with, because you can always just like bubble yourself and then walk across someone's line of fire. Your projected barrier, not so much. So, I recommend waiting until the person you're going to bubble has started taking damage, and then you bubble them. Because, baseline, like it's harder to stop yourself firing once you've already started. If you've not started already, you can just go, oh, hold on, wait a second, wait a second, now I'll start firing. But it's harder to stop yourself once you've started. But just on the most basic level, they won't react frame one. And you'll always get some energy off of it, because they have to actually react to the bubble first and then stop firing. So you'll always get some energy doing it that way. Um, don't take, you can take this too far the other way, because if, like... Mercy's got a Genji in front of her with the Dragon Blade. You know, you can kind of infer that Mercy's probably about to take some damage, so you don't need to wait for her to start taking damage. Go ahead, you know, we can predict what's happening there. You see someone get hooked, that guy's about to take some damage. Doomfist punches him, fair enough, like uppercuts him rather. They're about to take damage, 100%, so fair enough, but... Wait till they start getting shot, then bubble them, you'll always get some energy, and having energy is very core to playing as Zarya, because it made everything else, like, cascades down from having energy. Yeah, and the project, your personal bubble, you just bubble yourself and walk across someone's line of fire, so it's a little bit more straightforward like that, but the same will also be true if you have your projected barrier. If you wait till they start shooting you, then bubble yourself, You'll get some more. You'll get some energy off of it. That also has the added benefit of, um... You, while they're damaging your bubble, that's not interrupting, like, your health regens, your shield regen starting. So, you can bubble yourself and then be regenerating your own shield under there as well. Um... You know, shoot. They're shooting you, you bubble it back out, your, regen, your shield regen will just start faster, basically. Now, it doesn't start fast enough to be like, alright, bubble, alright, got a little bit of health back right there in the middle of the fight. But it'll regen faster if you then back out of the fight. So, they've got a Roadhog over here. Uh, he's hooked us. We don't have our barrier right now. How do we use our barrier? Because that's also important. And as always, we spent this opening part talking about... So we did, we, we were taking damage from D.Va at this point, so that's fair. But by the time we actually bubble ourselves, she's basically done shooting us. We just react kind of late to it, because 
We bubble ourselves right now. Like, fair enough. She's shooting us. She's firing the rockets. Great, great, great. By the time we do it, she's actually stopped. Like, all the missiles have been fired, basically, and she just turns around and leaves. And she's the only one we can see. So we use our own personal bubble too late. Uh, if we used it, like, right as she starts firing at us, fair enough, we'll get some energy off of it, but we just kind of used it late, and we didn't get much value out of it, and then we don't have it here either when we really need it. And we wouldn't have had it there either in the, uh, if we did use it sooner, but you can only decide what to do based off what's happening, right? So, yeah, meh, meh, meh. Life is difficult sometimes. So we lost that fight. Genji's still in there fighting with someone else. I think it's Lucio. Uh, our, someone on our team has switched around a fair few times over there, because they were Mei and now they're Reaper, so we got a few swift switchies going on over there. Try not to do that, by the way. Try not to just keep switching your hero as the, like, constantly, because, you know, it might not be the hero pick, you might just have played it badly, right? Like, that might be the actual issue. So, especially on, like, really short maps like uh, King of the Hill maps, right? There's no guarantee you'll ever get to use your ultimate because you can just get steamrolled so hard you never get to use your ultimate if it's a slow charging one like Graviton, right? Try not to just keep switching your hero because every time you do that, you reset your ult charge. So, and ultimates are really fucking important in Overwatch. So shockingly enough, they tend to be the strongest thing about your hero. Not always. Farah, for example, is better than Barrage, but typically they are the strongest thing of your hero, so you kind of want to charge that boy up and use it. Don't keep just changing your hero. You might just be playing the hero wrong. It might not be the pick itself. So we have no bubbles right now. How do we use our bubbles right here? He got hooked, so fair enough. And then he actually ended up not giving us any charge, even though he did get hooked. How fucking inconsiderate of Hammond, am I right? Unbelievable, the nerve of some people. So we've now been hooked. Our bubble's not back up again yet. We do need to be really careful about doing what we're doing right now, because we don't have a shield tank on our team, right? And we're just standing in the middle of the open courtyard right now, which makes it very easy for us to A, get shot, just baseline, right? Getting shots easier to do. But also, if they got an ability like Hook, if we're in the middle of the courtyard, he just has to hit us. I'd say it's not like we got any cover we can use, right? Try to play around cover, and, you know, cover can be a shield tank, if you got a Reinhardt and a Orisa, or just a wall. Try to play around some kind of cover, regardless of what hero you are, because you never know when you're gonna need to hide behind a wall. And you don't want to just stand out in open space getting shot. That's how you feed the enemy team ult charge, and we want to minimize feeding the enemy team ult charge as much as possible. Particularly important for tank players, because tanks are the main source of ult charge for the enemy team. So you really want to minimize time spent out in the open just getting shot. So we've got a few ultimates to use this time. Genji's not exactly gotten good use out of that Dragon Blade right there, has he? Look at that, look at that Genji over there. Over there, rather. Wrong side of the screen. Look at him go. Look at him go. And he got fucking microwaved to death, so great job. Oh no, the Beyblade. So, uh, that could have gotten better. You know, there was some room for improvement in there. Eh, eh, eh. It's taken us a really long time to charge up our ultimate, but we haven't been, like, decent energy at any point during this game, so that's not too shocking either. This is what I'm saying about building energy being so pivotal to playing Zarya, because you need energy to build up your ult reasonably quickly, and also if Zarya is going to create space for people, she needs to be a damage threat which you aren't if you don't have any energy. So right now Lucio is dead, so what we're doing right now is just mad risky in general, because if somebody on your team is dead, you really want to wait for that person to be back before you try and, like, make something happen. Just so you're not, like, trying to make something happen 5v6, you know? Though your team doesn't always let you do that. But regardless, we don't really want to be, like, rushing up like this right now. We're also... Doing exactly what we did a second ago, kind of just being in the middle of the courtyard. We're closer to the doorway this time, but we just like run through the doorway. Our shield gets broken instantaneously because they've got a Roadhog and a Reaper shooting at us. So that broke real fast. And there's still a Roadhog over there. Like, there's still a Roadhog and now Reaper's jumping around in front of us as well. So we've gone up like way too aggressively right there. Again, 
We don't have a shield tank, so we have to be really careful about just, like, running up to them. So, we have got some energy now, and we use Grav right here. I'm not super ecstatic about it, because Reaper can use Wraith Form. Just getting Anna is, like, pretty sick, but Anna's out of position already. Like, this Anna should reasonably die without using Graviton, because she's way too fucking far up. Uh, so I'm not super excited about this, because I'm not crazy about using Graviton just to get the Anna that was already out of position. Uh, and Reaper's there as well, but we haven't seen him use Wraith Form, so we should assume he has Wraith Form, unless we're told otherwise. And he can just leave, so you know. Uh, didn't... did we actually get the energy off of that bubble? No, we did not. We uh, came out of invulnerability right after the explosion ended. So, uh, basically our whole team's dead, and yeah, it's not, not exactly looking particularly good. Um, it's looking very bad, actually. Uh, very upsetting result. Anna threw herself off the map. Might as well. Why not? Genji's gonna get bullied right now. I don't feel like Genji got much value this game. So we did get a grab off in the end, but it wasn't too exciting. Is that us? Oh, don't be that way. Come on now. That's not productive. First off is the first round. Come on, dude. There've, I've seen a lot of games where you lose the first round and flip it around no problem. Don't be that way. Because then you just upset people for the remainder of the game. But it's just also not a productive way to think. Like, as soon as you go GG useless team, you've immediately just gone like, not my fault. Doesn't matter if it's actually your fault or not. You should still act like it is your fault. You should still say to yourself, all right, we lost. What could I have done better? There's no point thinking about what your teammates did because you can't control them. The only consistent thing in your games is going to be you. Even if it's genuinely not your fault. Act like it is anyway. What could I have done? What did I do wrong? And that's just a more productive way to think about things. But just don't go like GG useless team after the first round. Because like, come on. You're just going to tilt them for the second round then. So we're playing Farah now, we go for the boop, we do not get the boop, unfortunate, tragic. Uh, aim better, all that, you know, classic advice, very productive, obviously. So, we don't want to go in here right now, because there's no reason to stand on the objective right now. The objective does not open for another 17 seconds, so standing on it right now is pointless. We might as well be helping control the area around the objective, because... It's not as standing here is going to do anything, right? But we also then restrict the usefulness of Farah by going onto the objective because this is a contained room. We can't make as much use out of our vertical mobility in here, which is kind of a selling point of Farah is her vertical mobility. And we also just kind of like go kind of far away from our teammates because they uh, don't follow us in here. They're all still like outside fighting people and we've gone onto the point alone. There were a couple of people nearby, but they like, they don't, not our whole team follows us in here. And then we run into a couple of people in here where we're not really ready to fight. We don't have concussive blast to get away if we need to, and we just get killed. We should just be con trying to control the area outside with the rest of the team. And then we can move in to contest the objective once we've, uh, once it actually unlocks. We're also a DPS. We don't want to stand on the objective unless we have to. That's what the tanks are for, really. So, like, if we can just kind of, like, hang out adjacent to the objective, get, you know, gaining ground, that's great. We can let the beefy boys stand on the objective where the enemy team is probably going to be placing a lot of their focus. And then we can sit off to the side, just quietly, like, shooting away at them while they're occupied trying to contest the objective versus our front line. Basically, I'm saying let the front line be the front line, which, you know, fantastic advice me right there. I don't know why I haven't been picked up as an owl coach yet. So we don't want to go on the objective right now either because we know there's a Symmetra. Uh, for Our team isn't here with us again right now. Like we're, Diva's in here. She's the only one. So we're kind of just going in here by ourselves, basically. We've got one person in here with us. But again, going in the building restricts our vertical mobility because we're playing far. We're kind of all about that. 
And we know there's a Symmetra on the enemy team. So we're going to be going into the microwave with not many people, with the car wish rather, with not many people on our team, a lot of people on the enemy team. Don't try and touch the objective just for the sake of touching the objective. You want to actually touch it kind of productively. So I suspect right now we're trying to get the flanking barrage in on them, which, you know, is always very fun and cool. We don't shoot at them as we're going in, so that's nice. But Anna has seen us. She did just use the Trank, which is a big way that she's going to stop us. But there's still a, a D.Va right here. So we need to still be careful how we use Barrage because D.Va's here. We haven't seen her use any Defense Matrix during any of this period up here. She didn't even use it while she was going in right there. She's definitely not using it right now. So we can assume D.Va's got full Defense Matrix right now and can just turn around and do this. But also, moreover, look at the kill feed. Hammond's dead right now. Zenyatta's dead right now. Lucio's not looking good. Whoever the fuck that is isn't looking good. So this team fight's pretty much over regardless. Unless we're gonna wipe their team with this barrage, it's not gonna be very productive. Because our teammates are not gonna be in position to take advantage of what we do anyway. Um... Right now, we're too low. We shouldn't be trying to continue going in. We should be getting trying to like get back to our team or to a health kit. Either way, we shouldn't be trying to like continue going towards the enemy team right now. We need to prioritize getting healing first and then going back in. Now we're basically full health again, so it's fine. We're going on to the objective by ourselves again to try and contest the objective, which we should not be doing. If you want to go on the, the objective to like kind of draw aggro back to it without, you know... You don't want to be a tank, you know, you want to just, like, touch the objective, draw people away from the front line, kind of pull them back, whatever. You know, that's fine. But be a flanker if you're going to do that. Someone like Tracer Genji, they're way better at doing that because they can get in and get out very safely. Farah, not so good at that. Farah's good at flanking in the creep up behind you, wipe your team way. Not in the, like, go on, touch the objective and get away scot-free kind of sense. She's not so good at that. Try, you know, we want to play Farah, right? Who is a consistent output DPS with the ability to, like, flank and do massive damage to the enemy team's backline. So we're pretty fucked right here. Oh, no. You go. Come on. Don't be like that. It's not helpful. Even if it's genuinely not your fault. And, like, we're not playing well. Really? Like, we've, we've made some pretty bad decisions, but, like, our teammates are also not playing well, right? It's one of those things where, like, if we're gonna win this game, we need to play, like, a god kind of situation. I don't see us winning this game. Not every game's winnable. You have to understand that as well. Not every game's winnable. Some games, you're gonna lose, and that's just life right there. Just try and take what you can from it. Genuinely not my fault. Still think, what did I do wrong? What could I have done better to increase my chances of winning? Because that's the entire point of playing the competitive ladder, is being like, if you can play consistently well enough, you'll climb over time, right? It's a team game. There's inherent variance in there. The whole point is if you play consistently well, you'll still climb. Some games you're not going to win. Life's difficult that way. Sometimes you won't. Just try and take what you can from it. Try and just, even, not my fault, try and have a productive outlook. What could I have done better? Because even if you couldn't have won the game because just everybody else played completely terribly, chances are you still didn't play perfectly. So there's still something you can take away from it. Um, and that's what we're looking for. You, you gotta adjust expectations. Can't win every game. It might just be tilt. Might just have a bad day. It happens to the best of us. I'm not judging. I'm just saying, like, don't try to try not to be that way. It's not productive. You can't win every game. Life's difficult that way. Just try and take what you can from the game. Move on to the next game with the knowledge that you've gained from the previous game. Because you'll always you can always learn something from the game, if nothing else. Which is all very, you know hippie mojo mojo jojo kind of stuff but like come on just try and be productive about it can't win every game just try and learn what you can from the game and then move on um could just be a bad day 
Happens, you know, happens to the best of us. I get salty, everybody gets salty. It all happens. Try to minimize the salt though. Try and like internalize the salt. Don't, don't let the salt pour forth. Just try and keep it down. Cause just go on useless team in chat. Doesn't do anything. If you're gonna call your teammates useless, just do it to yourself. You can just sit at your desk and go, ha, ah, fucking Lucio, man. And like, you know, get it out, but like, don't actually shout at the Lucio, right? Don't actually go to, like useless team to them. Like, just go, God damn that fucking guy. Jesus Christ, he was terrible. You can do that to yourself, right? You don't need to say it to the person. Anyway, there you go. That's our lot. That's our lot right there. So thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just ship post with us. If for some reason you enjoyed the video and managed to make it all this way through, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.